Okay, welcome to another episode. Today we're replacing this guy. This is an idle air control valve. If you are getting code 505, I'll show you exactly what you can do to test if power is getting to this valve, testing the valve itself regarding uh, the electrical connections, and also removing the valve, and I'll show you one last test. So really you can pinpoint where the problem is before you run out and buy this valve because it's not inexpensive. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. Now the idle air control valve lives right back here on this vehicle. What I did off camera is I disconnected a few sensors here. There's also an air hose right here. Just so you guys have a better view of what uh, we're looking at here. Now before you go out and re replace the entire unit, what you want to do is first verify a couple things because you may have a problem somewhere else if you are getting code 505. So the first thing I'm going to do is just disconnect the connector here. And then of course here I have a digital multimeter. If you don't happen to have one of these guys, they're inexpensive. They're maybe $15 or $20. And what we're going to do is verify if power is getting to this harness connector. Because if it is not, then obviously the uh, idle air control valve won't work correctly. So the first thing you want to do is turn on the ignition key. You're not going to crank or start the car. Just turn on the ignition key. Okay, to the on position here. Don't crank it again. Just turn it on. Now what we want to see here is approximately 12 volts, which is the battery voltage. So we have a negative lead coming from the multimeter. This goes to engine ground, so that's any good metal point on the vehicle. And then we have a positive lead coming from the multimeter. In this case, we'll check two terminals, terminal 2 and terminal 5. So terminal 2 is the top middle, terminal 5 is the bottom middle. So if we touch terminal 2, and as you can see on the multimeter, we're getting 11.8 volts, so that's good. And we'll check number 5 here, and we're getting 11.8. So this verifies that power is now getting uh, to the idle air control valve. Now if you're not getting power in this case, just check the wires back here. Very often they fray, uh, they may crack, maybe they melted, whatever the case may be. Just check the wires back here. Uh, if they're okay, then most likely you have a bad fuse somewhere. Very rarely you could have a problem with the ECM, but most likely it's usually the wires back here that give you a problem. And once you wrap up that test, make sure you turn off the ignition key. Okay, so now we're going to use the ohms or the resistance setting on the multimeter. And if you take a look at the idle air control valve, you have six terminals. What we're going to do is an ohms or a resistance reading test, and we should have some type of uh, resistance. If we do not, then that's a very good uh, indication that the idle air control valve is bad. So let me show you how that works. So the number of terminals in here are number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so one through three is on the top, four through six is on the bottom. So for the first test, we'll place one lead from the multimeter on number two, that's the middle guy, and then we'll place the other lead on number one, and we'll also test number three and we should see around 30 ohms of resistance we'll do the exact same thing for the bottom one lead going to number five and the other lead will go to number number four and again one lead going to five another one going to number six and again we should see around 30 ohms of resistance so we'll first try number two terminal number two and terminal number one and as you can see we have 30 ohms that's good and then again, terminal two and terminal three. 30 ohms, perfect. Then number five and number four. 30 ohms, perfect. And then again, number five and number six. 30 ohms. Now the last test you can do is you have to remove the idle air control valve from the motor. And if you take a look, you have two screws. One guy's right there, that is a Phillips head screw, and then there's one on the opposite side. So you just remove those two screws, and then the idle air control valve comes right off of the vehicle. And of course, for this, you need such a small screwdriver. Just make sure it has a nice end, or a large enough end, otherwise you'll strip out these, uh, these bolts. But just press it hard, and there you go. And then you have one more in the back. And then just remove the idle air control valve 
from the body. Now for this last test, what we're going to do is plug in the idle air control valve with its harness connector. And I'll just place it right here. And what I'm going to do is turn on and turn off the ignition key. Turn on the ignition key, turn off the ignition key. And this shaft should move back and forth. So let's take a look. So that just verifies that this valve is working correctly. If you don't see any action here with the shaft, then you know that the valve is bad and it needs to be replaced.